Welcome. Hi, this is Carol from SkillCheck. We're going to be talking about online auctions today. And I have my, one of my favorite people from the Arizona Self-Storage Association board. Now, don't tell anybody that, all the other board members. <laughs> but Alana Ross is here with us. And she's from storageauctions.com. And I really like this idea of us using um, online auctions. And I'm going to give you the reasons why and why I love it so much. So welcome, Alana. And thank you for being here with us because it will be should be fun, huh? Yeah, thanks okay. for having me. I'm super excited to do this with you today. Cool. Here we go. So I, I think a lot of the interesting thing about this is we tend to reach more customers or more buyers, right? That are um, looking for self storage uh, spaces to buy. And yeah. I, I think one of the things that I found interesting about your company is you have some really great policies. Do you want to tell us about those or? Yeah. So our company allows every single storage facility to dictate their rules for their auction. It is your auction. It is your storage facility. It's not up to me to tell you how to run it. It's up to you. So the most common things we see, though, are 72 hour move outs. For whatever reason, maybe you're not in Arizona and you're in you know, Pennsylvania or New York, and they're getting 24 inches of snow, not an ideal time to actually move out a storage unit. You give them a little extra time. But for the most part, we do see 72 hours as being the most common time to move out. $100 cleaning deposit, that prevents somebody from coming and taking the one item out of the unit that they wanted and leaving you still with everything to clean out. They come and give you $100 cash and then they get it back when it's cleaned out. We do even have some managers who will hand them a broom and it's $100 back when you've broom swept your unit out, like you were doing everything for awesome. them. Um, That's knowing, what you're doing. <laughs> oh, I, you know, I would, I don't want to clean a storage unit. If I can tell somebody right. I'll get money back, you do it for me. I'm all for it. Um, knowing when yeah. the buyer is arriving, especially with Corona right now, we are seeing more and more locations utilizing this that they don't need, or they can't have more than a certain amount of people at their facility at one time. So if they've sold 10 units to 10 individual people, they'll set up times of this unit's going to be picked up at this time. This unit's going to be picked up at this time so that they're not exceeding the limit that they're allowed to have on the property. And you've, you've kind of got to guesstimate that maybe a tenant or two is going to be on the property as well. Um, and the other thing we're seeing right now is the contactless. Everything's contactless. You, you can rent a unit mm -hmm. online, you can pay a unit online, everything. So we're now seeing people get a little right. creative with the auctions and using these word locks. You pay your you know, storage fee for the online auction over the phone with a credit card, and they'll tell you the, the combination to the lock, and your $100 is still charged as a deposit, and they return it when they confirm they got their lock back and the unit was cleaned out. So they're getting creative. Well, I business. love that. Yeah. Yes, I really love that. And when I looked up these locks, I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> this is because uh, it was new to me. Yeah. But what a what a great idea to use for this, you know, remoteness we're and lack of contact with, you know, we're trying not to have so much contact. So if that's true, how can we make that happen the easiest way? And I love that. What a great thing to do. I also think the the other interesting thing is that we talked about with private sales, you know, people that come to the office and say, oh, there's nothing really in there and I need to get it out. But, you know, can we just put it up for auction? And mm -hmm. I, I have actually done that before when people have asked me to, but to do it online like this, it'd be even better for customers because they'll get more money for it than they would at our regular, just, you know, having people come to our auctions. So I, I love that. So anything you're thinking, if a customer says, geez, that was grandmother stuff and we just, we're in Pennsylvania now and you're in Arizona and it's, you know, be too cost of, uh, it costs us too much just to get there, right? <laughs> So I think it, that's an interesting thing. Do you hear of that much happening much? We actually get a lot of private sellers. We saw an uptick in it during um, the past year. We saw a lot of people who just, they've reevaluated and realized like, yes. I guess I really don't need that old, you know, furniture set that I thought maybe I would use. And they'll sell their items instead of doing it on Craigslist and taking pictures of each individual. They'll sell the entire lot as a whole on the auction. Right. The other one we have unfortunately seen a lot of is a deceased family member. I just mm. helped a woman who her father passed away in Oklahoma and she lived in Virginia. It was just going to be too much for her to travel right. and she had no way really to 
get these things back. And I hate to break it to all these parents out there that are storing all of their priceless possessions in storage, thinking their children want it. Yeah. Majority of them don't. <laughs> yeah. So we needed to get rid of it and we put it up on an auction and the storage facility in that case handled the transaction. But a lot of times the storage facility will have the tenant handle the full transaction. The tenant will meet the buyer at the storage facility and hand over the keys or yes. work off. Uh, and they work it all out and we do uh, notify the bidders that it is a private seller. It'll say that it's a private seller right. unit. Oh, that's cool. Uh, you know, it's so funny because that brings up a story that I have because I used to, when I lived in California, I used to get my hair done from this, from this lady and she goes, oh my gosh, every time I'd sit down, because she'd be, you just, she said, you remind me every time you sit here that I've got stuff in storage <laughs> and because she loved to hear my storage stories and stuff. Yeah. But she said, my sisters and I, she said the other day we went and we went to the storage proper, property and we went through, and every time, we, she goes, every year, this is no joke, every year, all four girls get together and we go to the storage property and we, you know, go through the stuff and we're, we're going to completely clean it out every time. She says, we are, we are so determined. We're going to, you know, we don't need that expense, you know, and everything. So this whole story goes around. She goes, by the time we get done going through all the stuff, we sit down, we look through pictures, you know, we start doing all this other stuff. And then we sit down and we find ourselves crying. And then we, now we're bringing wine. <laughs> So this is like Lodi area. So it's the wine country. But she said, so now it's almost, we're going there and we kind of just reorganize it and we have fun. And then she said, it's just amazing. But she said it had been there. And this is years ago. It, it had been there 15 years. Yeah. And that's amazing. But she did say we are moving some stuff out and then the kids are getting older. We're moving some back. And it, it's really just been an addition to our home. So I, I do, I love stories like that because, you know, there is a point where someone might say, like their kids might say, let's just get rid of that stuff. And, and doing a private sale would be even better and easier to, to figure out, like for, for them, for those people. So I, I think it's kind of a good thing. Yeah, our locations love it. Yeah. So you know what I love also about this is just the fact that when you have something like this, if you have a remote property that you might get one or two bidders, maybe if you're lucky. I used to, I had a, a store up in Sonora uh, and uh, California and man, sometimes I'd get three or four people there. And, uh, and especially if it was snowy or anything like that, we, we have called people <laughs> to come down to, to, you know, actually just so we could have three people there, but for those rural properties, what a great thing. I love that. I pulled this one because I, I, my, originally my family is from Oklahoma. And so this Kavanaugh mini storage in Poto, Oklahoma. <laughs> There's not a lot happening in Poto. So I'm thinking, you know, the interesting thing about this is they could, they would get buyers from all over. It wouldn't necessarily be, uh, or potentially, you know, people looking at it from all over. But again, finding these gems that might be in this, this storage space is kind of cool. I would think. We have, a lot of, we have a lot of these remote locations who I just helped a woman here in Arizona and she reached out. And she's like, well, you're my last chance. This is the third auction I've had on this unit. And I oh. said, well, what happened to the first two? She goes, well, the first one, no one showed up. The yeah. second one, I only had two people show up, so I couldn't hold the auction. Right. She's like, well, I'm, she goes, I paid the auctioneer. She goes, at this point, I've lost a lot of right. money. Absolutely. And so she goes, I just need to try online. And I said, yeah. well, if it doesn't sell online, um, which I will do everything in my power to make it sell, there's no charge. You could sell it every single time if, <laughs> if you have no right. bid. And we ended up selling it. She got, I think, like 180 bucks for the unit that awesome. she couldn't even get people to attend right. the auction prior. So it was one of those things. She had several hundred views, and each view is an attendee. Awesome. So she met the legal requirements, and she was just hoping somebody paid 10 bucks. <laughs> She's like, yeah. just get it out of here. That I was need a great day for her. Because <laughs> oh. it's sometimes hard to get 180 out of a space, especially if it doesn't look so great or whatever. That's a, that's a great sale there. That's yeah, awesome. <laughs> it was it was one of those things of I'm gonna try I'm gonna do everything I can and I'm in your corner. <laughs> yeah, true. And it you know the other weird thing that I I find that's interesting about this is that the new retail auction trend of just because of COVID nineteen you know has people not wanting to be in big groups anywhere. 
you could literally buy a storage space from your own play, from your own home, right? Yep. And um, and they're buying things and people that want not. I would say people that normally wouldn't necessarily not have gone to our storage auctions, but they're finding things in there and refurbishing them and selling them, which is so cool, isn't it? Because at least it's that yep. you're not just throwing away something in a in a you know trash somewhere that was decent and could have been used or would have been used. There's so many DIY uh, you know ideas and thoughts out there that are on the internet. And let's be honest, while we were all hanging out at home, we all scoured the internet, probably looking at things we normally didn't look at. <laughs> so I've yeah. seen more of my friends building furniture out of pallets than I ever Isn't thought I would. And we're seeing more people who are looking for things like wooden furniture or right. artwork because they, they're they going to do something with it or construction materials. I had a great unit that going back to Oklahoma was an old barn wood unit. The person who oh. had the unit, it was all really old, antique looking wood. Well, yeah. it was a phenomenal unit. It was a DIY paradise for right. somebody. And I guarantee you, had you opened this up a year ago, they'd be like, yay would mm. right <laughs> but this, this really opened it up and we've seen so many people who have come back and told us yeah i bought a dresser from you guys i bought a bedroom set and it yep. you know it looked real dingy but look what i did to, to fix it, it up slap That's some amazing, paint on it, it? and, and I, it, they made money they made me yes. money back. it's interesting to me because i i'm not that well, I'm I'm clever, but not that resourceful when using my hands like that. So, but I I see people turn things into just beautiful pieces of art or furniture, and I'm thinking, wow, that is that's beautiful. <laughs> How yeah. do they do that? But yes, it's it is, and and it's reusing and reutilizing something that's not going to go to a landfill somewhere. So that yeah. I like too. Yeah, we've seen some beautiful things. Yeah, you know the other thing I guess for me is that. I have had issues where, in, in fact, that things like this, where there's so much snow, and because I've had stores in Reno and Tahoe and um, just areas where there was a lot of snow, and uh, in Denver, I've had snow up to the eaves before, and I and I fly in to do an auction, I'm like, okay, it's not happening. It's, the manager's like, no, it's not happening. But I was like, yeah, that. But again, those cancellations for bad weather, or you have too few people show up. And, you know, the whole idea of this is, you know, what a time saver for the managers, right? Yeah, I, I it, was. it is. It's, we're kind of like the postal service, rain, hail, sleet, yeah. snow, we're, <laughs> we're still functioning. You can do it from yeah. the comfort of your own home. You can sit inside with your hot cocoa and be perfectly fine. Uh, you know, we're, you and I are in Arizona. I'm in yeah. Scottsdale and hey, something weird happened. It snowed at my house oh, yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. And it's one of those like, what? <laughs> I know. I, I went out too, and I was like, "Hey, I'm in Arizona, and it's snowing <laughs> or hailing for us." It was like, but the yeah. but the my dogs when they went out, they're like, "What is that on my back?" <laughs> they're yeah. not used to any snow or anything. No, it does. It saves so much stuff for the managers as well. You're not planning around um, the bidders or the buyers' uh, schedule of the auction coming up. You can yeah. take photos as soon as you're able to by your state's rules you know, have the photos, put them online. You're not waiting for anything. If it's snowing or if it's raining one day, you're not required out there that day cutting locks. You right. could do it the next day if you if you really yes. want to. So it really does, it frees up a lot of time. And the managers, uh, we've seen them where they're like, oh, it's gonna take me so much time to take all these photos. Well, traditionally, when you open up a unit, you're kind of putting a general description of what's in there anyways. Now you just right. have photo proof of what's in there. And it, they've actually found it doesn't save, or it saves them a mass amount of time. It doesn't cause them any more work than they right. thought they were going to have to do. No, I think it's it really the easiest way to do it, right? But again, during COVID time, this is the perfect time to use something like this that gives us the opportunity to even reach more buyers. And again, yeah. they're not using the dumpster, which is awesome. I wanted to talk about this, or have you have you tell us what this means that. Um, because this avoiding the auction errors. Tell us how this works with you all. Yeah, so we have APIs um, and it's an integration with the various softwares. These are the five uh, most common that we see in our system. And one of the things it does is it will tell you, you can press, you know, let's pull site link, for example, let's 
the big one out of them all. You can click on Site Link Sync in our system and it's gonna pull over every single unit that's in auction status for you. So you don't accidentally miss one. Or maybe you have a unit in there where you're like, oops, like that one's not supposed to be in here anymore. <laughs> it kind of lets yeah. you go back to it. Um, and it goes through and it pulls it. Another thing it does though, is it will actually tell our system when you've accepted a payment for that auction. So ah. it'll cancel the unit as well. Cause we joke around that, you know, managers aren't really that busy, but you can get a manager who has five people in line and they take a payment and they've now moved on to five other people. And they've completely forgot oh. to take that unit out of auction. Yes. So that's one of the things these integrations like the site link API will pull that unit back out of the auction and it kind of helps the manager make sure they don't sell a unit they shouldn't. Yeah. You know, that's an interesting thing that you're talking about because one of the largest uh, self-storage settlements uh, uh, in court over something like this was 1.3 million, I believe. And it was the, the assistant manager had taken a payment the day before and forgot to tell the manager. And then the manager had his list of what he was gonna auction off and didn't check the computer. Cause I always check the computer. I print out the, the tenant ledger so I know if yep. there are any payments or anything. And I check the drawer to see if by chance it's, you know, it should be at its hundred dollars or whatever. No, no payment was taken. Um, but anyway, it was 1.3 million because they made an error and forgot to take the name, the number off the list when the person paid up and they got damages for, well, whatever was in the, the unit wasn't really worth that much, but the 1.3 million was kind of, kind of like an idiot factor. <laughs> You're getting trouble because you made a stupid mistake. Yep. And, and, and courts don't like that. We've seen a lot of these um, people that come to us and they start using the integration. And I actually had one that he's like, all right, I'm gonna do my first sync. And he's yeah. like, this unit should have been auctioned six months ago. He's like, how did it squeak by? Right. And it was one of those things, it was an oversight. Unfortunately, in their state, they can only collect a certain amount of back rent. And that was not, they were they were going to try to collect too much at that right. point. So it was one of those things that they should have auctioned it at least a few months before to be in compliance. And they just missed it. it it's right. human error. So when you now have a manager who's double checking everything and your software that's double checking everything, it, it's just a second set of eyes pretty much right. like telling you like, hey, you actually have nine units, not eight that are eligible for auction. Right. You know, that that's another thing that kind of makes me think that your company is better than any other company because you you have to pay for all this integration with these um, companies. So what, what I find fascinating is if you don't, if you use some other company, you're not going to get this advantage. And this one is where we have the most exposure. And the, the, the frustrating thing where, you know, that even as a supervisor, I could make a mistake or the manager could have mis made a mistake. Uh, the auctioneer can do something stupid and we all get involved. But I, I love this because this to me is what sets you really apart from any other company that's out there doing the online auctions. So yay for that. Yeah. <laughs> right? And I'll tell you, I always, I, my world is um, in self-storage was property insurance, property and liability. Wow. I will always have a little bit of sale and disposal, oh. you know, thoughts in my mind. Like I don't want you to get sued because, right. you know, I, I've dealt with a lot of those sale and disposal claims where it's like, oh, you really could have done things differently to avoid this whole mess. Yeah. yeah, it's funny that you mentioned that because this guy from Texas, uh, he and I, I had known him. He used our mystery shopping service early on. And so he called me and I told him, you should go down and pay that because he was upset of that he was going to have to buy the stuff back from the person that bought it at the auction. And I said, you need to run. <laughs> run down there and pay whatever he wants. And he, he was an older gentleman. He kind of dug his heels in and he didn't um, do that. And so, and, and he told me in a later conversation, he said that he'd gotten rid of his sale and disposal insurance because he thought he hadn't used it in years. And, and so he not only lost his storage facility, but he also had some small apartments or a few apartments that he lost to just to pay this uh, auction error off. It's yeah, amazing. It's it is definitely amazing. We just talked yeah. to an owner who they're looking at a hundred thousand dollar claim. Oh my goodness. For yeah. An, you know, an auction and yeah. an auction gone awry. And now they're they're asking us, like, yeah. hey, if we use you, can can we hopefully avoid this going forward? Exactly. 
And that's that this is just a, the jewel in the crown of what you do, yeah. right? Yeah, we are always, so, we're always working on our APIs. So even if you think like, great. it'd be neat if this worked this way with my software, let us know. Like we're, we're up for open ideas. Yeah. Tell us about this one. Uh, this is a storage facility up in Pennsylvania. Um, they sold a unit online. And lo and behold, when the person came to pick it up, there was $315,000 worth of marijuana in the unit. Now, I did tell the owner, like, hey, you know, had you took better pictures or we would have had a better idea, we could have got more for that unit. <laughs> but yes, you never know what you find in here. Uh, this is one of those things. owners that might have just kept that. <laughs> My favorite part of this entire story is there's a quote from the tenant. And his yeah. response was, oh, man, I, I wanted to get that out of there. Like, why are you late on your rent? And you have over a quarter of a million dollars in drugs in that storage unit. Wow. <laughs> I would think that, you'd pay your bill for it's that. It's so weird, isn't it? I, you know what? This is, Alana, this is kind of what I love about self-storage. There's just so many weird things that happen. It makes it enjoyable and fun. And just you sit back and say, wow, you know, that is so cool. <laughs> or this happened in my store, this is this store and that store. And, and that's a great story. But again, you know, this happens to, you know, when we open up spaces, sometimes we find stuff that, um, you know, we don't know that's in there. And sometimes we don't know it. Yeah, in this case, obviously it's not in there, but it is so fascinating what could be in there, right? <laughs> Yeah. You just never know. You never know what those little gems, and these were actually hit all these bags. There's 63 bags total of vacuum sealed marijuana. They were all yeah. hidden in those plastic totes that you'd find like outside yeah. in the backyard, like a little bench. Yeah. Two yeah. of them in there, and you would have never known. But yeah, right. they opened them up and surprised. Just looks super them. organized, right? <laughs> Talk about a good I love investment. Those, they, I love those spaces that they look organized. Sorry. Yeah, they bought the unit for $110 and their return on investment, $315,000 worth of pot. <laughs> yeah, they didn't get to keep it though. I'm pretty no, sure. No, the police kind of said it was theirs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. That is so fun. Yep. So, you know, you know, the other weird thing about this is, you know, we think, and I've done a ton of auctions, but trying to get a good auction crowd, and I, and you know, thankfully it was in areas where generally I have a good crowd anyway, but sometimes it was iffy if I would even get three or four, depending on weather or weird stuff happening or the wrong, maybe it was a, a day that somebody else was having an auction because I had to like look for that too. Yep. So in this sense, you don't even ever have to do that, do you? No, no. all you need is one unit. We are going to do everything in our power. We have phenomenal SEO. We're always right. going to show up on the first page. And we have a team of people that do our marketing who are great at it. If we go into right. a podunk town that mm -hmm. has never seen an online auction before, we're going to throw everything plus the kitchen sink at it, yeah. doing additional marketing just to make sure that you're getting those. I just did one in Tennessee where it was in the middle of nowhere. So I actually put all of the unit stuff on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. I don't think I've ever hated Facebook more in my entire <laughs> life after about a thousand <laughs> messages. But right. it's one of those things we're going to do everything in our power to yeah. market, to get the visibility and to get those units sold. In that case of that facility in Tennessee, they kind of flubbed up and gave us 24 hours to sell the unit. And they were like, oh, there's man. like our bad. We didn't mean to do this. Well, right. we, we actually sold that unit for $1,200 and it wow. was, it was, I threw a hail Mary and stayed up all night on Facebook, but it worked. <laughs> so, wow. I noticed so, yeah. it, like, like on this, you put non-climate or not climate controlled. What, what do you do that for? So people want to know if it's inside or outside. If you think right. of the money of a buyer, if you're paying for an inside unit, there's probably better stuff in there because, mm -hmm. you know, you're paying a higher dollar amount. And then your outside people for the non-climate, these are going to be the people who are like, I can just pull my trailer up. It's going to be very easy for me just to throw everything in and get out of there. Yeah, so. That makes sense. Yeah, we see it both ways. And another thing that we tell people, even with these non-climate, whatever, I've had people who are in the dustiest parts of Arizona and they're like, yeah, I just kind of like blow things off. I'm like, don't. The bitters yeah. love to see the dust. Yeah. So they like that it's outside. They like that it's been sitting here for 25 years and has- You don't know what goodies are there. So, well, and they wouldn't, love yeah, it. they wouldn't have paid for it for that long unless there was something valuable there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. so- 
So they like seeing that stuff. They like to see if it's, you know, indoor, outdoor. They right. just kind of like to know what they're in for. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I thought I noticed we, you know, had several examples here of storage mm -hmm. spaces. And some of these, I'm going to say, I don't think, well, the $10 one I get, but I mean, that might be a no bid for me, like at a at a, an auction that I was personally doing. Because you look at it and think, oh my gosh, that's so much work. Mm -hmm. Or maybe not a lot of stuff. There are a whole but bunch so, of here to just be boxes. <laughs> yeah, but the 310 for the one that we were, you know, looking at here, uh, that's an excellent price. And then the 720 for this other one, you can see a bikes in there. But they do look. They put it up to the ceiling. They really tried to, you know, I don't know. It seems like that that makes sense. But I will say that it's was sort of rare. It would be rare for me to get even 720 for that space. And for sure, 310, I, I would say that store, that space would normally go for about 110, 120 generally. I, I was, you know, especially doing my own auctions and we had 36 locations. When I, when I would go do this, these things, I would kind of get a feel for it. But that 40 looks pretty low, but it might be because it's not, um, you didn't have enough time. You know, it's, I mean, yeah. I just pulled some of these off. I didn't look or whatever and but they it's really only get off the day. Yeah, so that unit still has a day uh, almost a day and a half left on it right. you'll really see those numbers um, go up double and triple uh, in most cases within the, the last like hour hour and a half yeah. um, one thing that's neat with the online auction is it adds just like in the eBay days when you couldn't just go in there and bid at the last moment it jumps right. back up so it yeah. adds three minutes back onto the time. So you're continuously going and building this up and you may start, like you may be coming in at the very end of your day where it's you know, $40 coming in at that last hour. Next thing you know, that unit's at $400 because yeah. people are waiting to the last minute. But we don't know why. They all yeah. seem to know that it's gonna you yeah. know, continue to grow at the last minute. But, and I will say the units that are high dollars, so like the 75 or the 720 unit, right. I guarantee you people are sitting at home and they're like, what do they see in that unit that I don't see? Like they're right. like, oh, absolutely. I don't see. So they'll <laughs> bid on it and they'll yeah. bid it up. And it's, yeah. it's a little curious, like, okay, like now we're curious. What do you guys see out of that yeah. whole thing? But we see a lot of things of the units that have majority of boxes. Totes are the number one thing. If you have right. a singular tote in that storage unit, list it as an item in there and a tag because just yes. like the it controlled the bidders think if you paid the ten dollars for that tote whatever is in it is worth more than that so they're gonna make more money because you have totes rather than boxes yeah alana how long do they stay online for sale the average that we see is seven to ten days uh, we tell people give it as much time as you can we're we're gonna market it we're gonna put it out as many eyeballs as we can uh, sometimes we do see the people who put them up for 24 hours, 48 hours. We highly discourage it. But yet again, it's your auction. It's your right. results. But when they come to us and they're like, well, I only got $20 for it. Well, you only had it up for 12 hours. So right. it's one of those things of, um, you know, we explain to them. Seven to 10, though, is good. On average, mm -hmm. like I would say the majority of my locations, I see about 10 days. Yeah. It's interesting because even though you might think, oh, well, that's 10 days uh wasted but i i mean i can also see there's a for some owners like if they are really full then they would say you know i'd rather just get this out in two days and whatever i get for it and get it re-rented for that great price or whatever but you know i mean i can see i can see it going both ways leave it on 10 days or you know get it done as quickly as possible well, and <laughs> so we can be re -rented. it's still the same and whether you're doing right. it the second or the 10 days you've still sent that notice out at least 30 days beforehand of when their auction right. is so you've had that time it just depends on when the manager gets out there right. cuts the loop, takes the photos and puts it online so either they waited till the second day before to throw it up or they have just you know they've done their due diligence and we get some that are up for 28 days and right. they just build up momentum and the views and you'll see those in the thousands so look, give me, I'll give you it for example. So in California, you, let's say you waited, let's just say you're on average 63 days, you need to be late before you, I would auction like on the 63rd day, for example, mm -hmm. or 65th, somewhere 
somewhere right in that area yep. <laughs> after the two lien notices. So if you do, so then I could put it on as soon as I cut the lock and you know took the pictures or whatever the video. I could put it up as soon as I wanted to prior to that the date where it actually should be sold, right? That is correct, yeah. Yep. yep. We tell them you if you're cutting if you're cutting the lock for the description for your newspaper ad for your notice, you take the, you're video. Cutting the lock, take the pictures, like get right. your stuff done. And right. I, it sounds weird, but as owners and managers, we've actually seen that the return on the rent once the unit has been put online is greater because the tenant gets the notice and they're like, all right, my stuff's going for auction. Yeah. Then they see the link and they're like, wait a second. And they see their unit and they see their stuff and they really don't like seeing their stuff online. So right, they exactly. it. <laughs> so it makes it a little more real when they can see their stuff yeah. for sale. So do you take do you put up pictures or um, the digital pictures or do you do video? We found that our bidders like the pictures more than video. Um, with the pictures, it's a better quality and they can zoom in on the items. Yes. They like the time to research. If they see, you know, for example, we're looking at this 310 unit. I think that's a, it looks like a stove of some sort. So if they zoom in and they can kind of see, okay, right. it's a Kenmore stove. Ah, it still has plastic on it. But in a video, yeah, you're moving nice. around so much that they don't get to really see and, and zoom in and, and get that idea of what it is. They'll, they will definitely pay more for what they can see better. Yeah. I, you know, also over in that far right picture, I would zoom in on what those little wheels are. Cause it kind of looks like a wheelchair pushed together to something. I can't tell it what is that is. Yep, it is a wheelchair. Um, and you wow. can see other things in this unit. I can see a crock pot, a few totes, yep. uh, boxes, mm -hmm. and it just You've depends. definitely got better eyesight than I do. <laughs> I paid a lot for my LASIK. <laughs> you did. I got and a big I, screen, that's all I did. <laughs> I look at this all day long, um, but yeah. you will see, cool. like for me, if I saw this unit, I may think that that was a unit of, um, a lot of times we get people who are, homeless who have storage units and we see a lot of boxes and kind of weird random things that don't make sense. Right. Uh, that can kind of deter a, um, a buyer from the unit. If it really doesn't make sense of why this hodgepodge of stuff is in there, um, it can kind of turn them off to it. Yeah. Well, and it gets, depends on how much they, they might want one item out of there, but they have to take the whole thing. So that's sometimes, and I can guarantee you the manager who opened this door is like, thank goodness somebody bid something because oh, I don't have to spend the next day cleaning clean this out yeah, and filling my true. dumpster. I used to ask for a dollar. Someone give me a dollar and just take it off, will you? Please. Yeah. Please, yeah. someone. Yeah. I can't tell you how often I did that. We do a lot of them that come in at the last minute for 10 bucks. And it's just the managers are like, woohoo. Yeah. I like this one. <laughs> this is one of my favorite. It's just. Yes. They made a little aisle down there that they can get to stuff and, and, you know, they have Elvis and Marilyn Monroe in yeah. there. I wonder, well, look, at that, look at the bid on that. Yeah. Oh, I, that is amazing. I just love that in Baton yeah. Rouge. In Baton Rouge. And it was our, you know, that's where our company is based out of is Baton Rouge, yeah. Louisiana. And the owner of our company has a statue of like a figurine, big figurine of Batman in one of his storage facilities. He goes, oh, yeah. I want to find out who won this unit and see if they'll sell me Elvis. Elvis. I, mean, I could have yeah. Elvis with Batman. <laughs> so, oh man, that, that, in, that in and of itself, I'm wondering what that would go for. It would be a lot, I would think just that one item. Yeah, that statue, I mean, it's over six foot tall. Yeah. And, it's, and, it's and then cool. all the other stuff in there too. Yeah. You don't want, if they're a collector of something, I think yeah. that if I find that interesting, that's a, yeah, that's a great one. It was a neat unit and it yeah. went for a good amount of money. And we had so many people interested. And the best part to me was the auction end date was Elvis's birthday. So oh, that is, it was, that is that so was cool. like, hey, that's a great day to end this. Yeah. As a kid, I was an Elvis fan. I and I just well, I'm still an Elvis fan. I think he's an amazing voice. But we got to see him in Vegas and my dad paid um to get down on the very front row. And so I have like in a little box that I've kept that someone will never know about, right? Oh, they'll find it in storage someday. <laughs> but I've got this little the rhinestones that came off of his uh cape. 
Oh. So I just scooped him up off of the, he saw, and, and he sees me soup, scooping all this stuff. And then he gave me a little, one of his uh, handkerchief things that he keeps with him that he gives out. That's so, awesome. That's yeah. a very awesome story. Yeah, yeah. see, you could have just had, bought an Elvis and oh, yeah. had the whole, you could just piece <laughs> them back. This is another good one, and I kind of would like some of those games. I'm, I used to play Galaga a lot. So that, well, that unit is still available. That yeah. unit has, it has uh, oh, it? three days, I think, left on it. Wow. So, but yeah, it's a great price, too. Look at that price. Yeah, that's where it was five days before the auction. Um, wow. I'm not quite sure what it's at now, but I know it has risen since then. And this entire unit from front to back, to back. is filled with arcade games. Yeah, yeah. It, it looks great. That is, uh, you know, and even if they're not in that great of shape, people are buying them and refurbishing them. So yeah. I think that's that that would be a great. But again, if you just had this at your storage property, you would not have people from all over looking at that. I mean, it's yeah. just I, I don't think I might be able to get sixteen hundred, maybe, maybe if, if if I had a good buyer there. But there are days that I can and people would be like, oh no, we don't want to haul that off. We don't know what we would do with it. And, and I could see that going for no bid too, or very low, some, something like ten dollars. That like, yeah, I'll take it off for you. And then the, then they kind of screw us over <laughs> when and we could have gotten more had we done it right. You know, right? That's a ten by forty. That's not wow. a small unit, and yeah. it is floor to ceiling, wall to wall, packed with these arcade games. Mm -hmm. And granted, we have no idea if they work, but they meant right. something to somebody. Fix and, those things. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there it's it's pretty neat. The seats to the car game are actually behind the car game. Are they? So <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, I wondered where those are. I figured they were probably in there somewhere. Right I like there. this one too. What what are the, I mean I see those figurines, but I I, I mean th this is what happens. If you don't know enough about it, you think, yeah, those are amazing, but are they worth anything, right? But yeah. look at the bid on that. Look at somebody the bid. knows yeah. something. And it's a unit full of artwork. So those are right. little sculptures, but yeah. in the back, yeah. it's all, all art. Pictures. And they're, a lot of them are crated. So there's a lot of care that was done for these right. pieces. And yeah. the person who won this unit, now let's talk about going a little bit of a distance. This person came from Texas to pick up wow. that storage unit. Florida. That's going wow. all the way to Florida. They bought a flight. They got a flight, yes. they took it, and they went out to um, to Florida and picked up the unit, and they packed it up in a moving truck and went on. But for $17,000. So. But, I mean, this is not something we ordinarily find, and this is the hard part because if we sell something like this and we've ever made a mistake, that's a big deal, right? But yeah. the fact that we go online and try to get a good bid is is a good thing, too. Right. Yep, and I can guarantee you this storage facility recovered their lost rent on that, right. that unit because that's the goal of having the auction. It's getting yes. your rentable space back and trying to recoup your lost rent for, for that unit. Yeah, you know, some states, if you get more than you have that that you owed or whatever, you have to send it to the state. Yep. We, we hardly ever do that, but yes. They and, and, you know, we even told them, uh, we have reports in our system that'll tell you your overage. You can put in, here's what they owed for rent. Here's what they had for their um, auction fees. Here's what their late fees were. Here's what the right. unit collected. Here's what's over or under. So at least, you know, like, oh. all right, I guess I collected too much. <laughs> so yeah. this yeah. one was definitely too much. Yes. Well, well. Yeah. I like this one too. This is some kind of collector, right? Yeah, it's all Halloween decorations, yeah. you know, you've got the, the scary psycho murderer on the front and it's all, you know, pretty nice Halloween decorations. That yeah. is where we, we think people store their decorations is in storage right. and this person was quite a collector, but I would have loved to have been there when the manager oh, opened, yes. opened that. Because <laughs> you know <laughs> they the don't. Like, oh boy, that scared me a bit there. And the you way it's just posed there is perfect, isn't it? Yeah, I it, yeah. It, it it's perfectly posed because you know they jumped out of their skin. Oh yeah, door, and that's a swing door. That's not even a roll that's up. A There's no like door. idea. They just swung it open and and saw that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just never know anymore, do you? Yeah. That's funny. Oh, I love this one too. Well, and you know that's interesting because I 
I actually thought this might have gone for more than 720 in a weird way, but then I'm thinking, well, I don't know. I, it's still a good amount for this. I, and I don't know if, if I would have necessarily gotten at that as, as the auctioneer, but I'm, but the, it's, it's an amazing unit because again, golf clubs go well, you know, the different things that they have in there are just uh, sellable, right? Yeah. So one of the things that will kind of um, set the bidders apart and make them look at this unit is that green tag next to the unit yeah. size where it says it's a manager buildup. In most bidders world, they're going to think this is the junk that was left behind that nobody wanted, not even the manager. And right. now they're putting it online to sell because they just want it gone. So that's where you see, okay, that's a lot of golf clubs. I don't like, this is a bachelor pad heaven. There's yeah. the little NASCAR signs back there. You see the beer mirror, the jukebox, the golf clubs. Like this is I, I did think I was like that has got to be a southern state, and I looked down and it's Myrtle or look at Myrtle Beach. Well, there's the answer. That's why Myrtle Beach is great golfing, right? Yep. So yeah. it just kind of tells you, um, you know, what that what they were looking for. In the, I mean, maybe this would have gone better in Florida than it did right. in Myrtle yeah. Beach. But right. yeah, and the manager buildups and the private sells, you know, those are kind of hard for the bidders because they just think there's nothing but junk left in there that right. nobody wanted. And we really try to highlight things like this. The, yeah. There's hundreds of golf clubs in this unit. Right. <laughs> so, yes. And there's golf clubs even on the other side of this unit. Yeah. We're only looking well, at one awesome. wall. There's more over there. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. so cool. Got another one here that I liked. Uh, you know, even these cruddy spaces, because yep. sometimes I have to beg people, you know, we'll please just take it off for a buck. Somebody take, somebody buy for a buck and, you know, we'll get it in the dumpster. You can look through it first or whatever. But I mean, this one got 10 bucks. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. It's some of the stuff you think is just absolute junk. Uh, I I found a few of these where I'm like, oh, why would somebody buy this? And I'm talking to my husband who is a car. I'm married to like the most manly man car yeah. guy ever. And right. he looks at it. He's like, well, that's a car seat in there. He's like, the frame of the seat is probably still fine. And it's somebody good. can yeah. go ahead and redo it. And I'm like. Repulsor yeah. it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, and there's <laughs> other stuff back in the back that, that looks like it might be some other manly things. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, I actually blocked Power him team. from their website. He's not allowed to see the options. Oh. He can't log in. Uh, <laughs> that's cause funny, he, isn't it? He was bidding on a car in a storage unit in Las Vegas. And he's oh. like, yeah, we'll drive up there we'll just and get go to Vegas. Yeah. Just drive up there. I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It depends on the car, I guess, right? There from his point of view, huh? It was a 77 Bronco. And oh, he see now. See? They're a big deal right now. I'd say that's, that would be a good find. He, he's a collector of old trucks and cars, and yeah. he's at capacity. So... <laughs> Okay, tell him I've got a little room in my garage if he needs yeah. a place. No, I'm just down in Tucson, so. We go often. We go once a month. Oh, that's <laughs> good. That. That's good. You know, I think um, a lot of, for me, I, when I just, I felt like, you know, I've got to do this. I just, you try it, right? It's yeah. So if there's no long-term commitment and you just do it auction to auction, there's no contracts. What can, I don't think you can find anything better than that. And I think it's just moving people who are used to the auction and they kind of like the auctioneer or whatever sometimes, you know, but there is a new way to do this and it's COVID friendly for sure. And it's just a better way to really handle our auctions and get rid of those auction spaces quicker. Because sometimes I would plan them like three or four times a year, but this way, I would just keep them constantly going all the time. You know, we'd be put, we'd be getting them ready, putting them up online, and then just getting ready for that buyer to come in and not having, you know, a hundred people show up, which I did in Vegas for auction. And, and just that, just the management of that was just horrific. So I just do think what, you know, you we're now to the point where we say those, the way we were, did auctions in the past, that that is literally in the past. And we've got to move on to just a better, uh, friendlier way to do it. I think yeah. it's, it's going to make us more money, right? We so had, I want to go ahead. We had so many people who even transitioned to us that love their auctioneer, yes. but during COVID they couldn't have the auctions uh, with the live people. So yep. they used this even just for a short period of time. Um, and then went back to their live auctioneer, not because of the bids or 
bad or anything like that. Yeah. They just really love the live auction I, process. I know. It's... And it was one of those things. But we we actually noticed that the locations that are anniversary month billing, they yeah. love online because they get right. I mean, oh, yes. every single day is a different day for somebody to potentially yeah. go to auction. And they they love it because one unit is all it takes. And it's right. auction. auction. It's gone. If it doesn't yes. work for you, it doesn't work for you. Yeah, I I went you know years ago because I started in before when were you born? <laughs> I was born in '83. Okay, I'm so I started I'm after you were born. I started in '84. See, look, I'm doing All good. Right. <laughs> um, but the weird thing is, is like and then we, we you know we had no other choice to do it the other way. But now it just thinks that so many things have changed and people are on their phones or on their device. We've got to adapt. We can't stay with that old because it's just not. And especially I, I'm in Arizona because we have lots of, you know, I guess some people don't think about, it, but we have lots of remote locations where you might get you haven't you wouldn't have even com competition is you know at three or more buyers out there. So if that happens, how do you get rid of them? You just leave them there, which would be stupid. Well, We've actually noticed a big thing right now is with a lot of the big guys going to auctions, you're not getting the crowds because those big guys are doing online now. So right. smaller mom and pop locations were banking right. on the big brands bringing the buyers. You know, 10 yeah. units and they were going along. If you've ever been to a live auction, you've gone on one of these like auction trains where you go facility yes. facility. Yeah, yeah. And now the mom and pops, they're still trying to have these live auctions, right. but the big guys have pulled out and they're now all online and they've really lost a big bidder base yes. because they don't have the powerhouse of the big guys uh, doing live. Right. And bringing, because that the whole idea of those auctions is you have enough people there that it, it can generally go for more than what's kind of worth sometimes for us. You know, I, well, I love it when I make money on it where it's like they paid more than I owe. It's like, oh, those are, those are the cool ones. But I really do thank you so much for the time and effort. Uh, and I hope people get a hold of you. I've got your information up here, so that's awesome. They can reach yeah. you, I guess, with your phone number or your, your email, which is yeah. easier, email you and or uh, so that's actually my cell phone number and I give it oh. to every single person so you can reach me day and night. Uh, you'd be amazed at the amount of managers that I've found are setting up auctions at midnight. If I'm <laughs> up, I'll answer. So <laughs> you have 24 hour support just in that's your awesome. salesperson helping you. Um, but that email or cell phone is easier. A lot of times I am on a webinar like this or doing training because we do very mm -hmm. in-depth training with each of our locations. So if it goes to voicemail, I can reply to an email while I'm still having a conversation mm -hmm. um, and doing yeah. a training. So it's if you miss me on, e on the phone, you can even text me. I respond. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're amazing because I know I see you everywhere on LinkedIn and all these <laughs> places. I'm like, geez, you're just very good at this. And I'm so poor at it. And I think it's just my age and I'm and I need help. And so Desiree in my office helps, but I, I really appreciate your time to do this. And uh, I, I'm definitely a fan of storageauctions.com and we would love people to subscribe to skill checks webinars because we want to produce things that you want to see. And I think this is a really well worth it uh, thing for our, our people to listen to. I love that, you know, cause we even, you know, listening to this, you learn so many things and you've got the advantage of having someone else looking through your lean information where you're not going to make a mistake, which for me, that that's the big sell for, for your, for your company is yep. that is you, you have worked with all these other um, software companies to make your product better. And I love that. And that and we, to me is amazing. We even have a second set of eyes on our product, which is our timeline guarantee. It'll double check your dates that you've sent your letters and tell yeah. you, you have done something out of step because you do oh, not yeah. want that million dollar lawsuit and it's great i uh yeah. i will say with your series i've only been doing storage for 12 years and i'm still considered a very much baby in this industry <laughs> of being very new to it at 12 years yeah. I have never listened to one of your presentations where I didn't learn something new. Oh, thank but you so always, much. It's great education coming to these awesome. and learning about them and yeah. seeing things from, from a different point of view. And yeah, yeah I've, I've definitely implemented a few things in my life. Yeah. I've been, I've trapped, I've been a skill check, Carol Mixon roadie. Yeah. I've gone and thank seen you in person yeah. and other people. You've been with me maybe for a couple of names.
Well, thank you so much for your time. And I really, um, and I really hope people look at your site and, and managers get out there and get away from the old style, you know, auctions. It's just, it's just not really making sense anymore. And we've got to move on. And I know I've, sometimes my kids are like, oh, you got it, mom, you need a new phone or you need this or need that. And then I, I, I resist it. And then when I get it, I'm like, I'm in love with it. Yep. Because I'm like, why did I ever resist that? Because it's it's amazing. So. And it never hurts to try. Try something new. Right. We tell people right. when they do try it, go through three auction cycles because you're gonna yeah. build it up every single That's time. Right. It's gonna yes. go into momentum. Go through three. If it doesn't right. work for you after three, yeah. Yeah. I swear my feelings are not gonna be hurt. I will try everything in my power to help you though. But if it just doesn't work, it doesn't work. And yeah. And even Alana, if maybe they're with another online company that they're not happy with, or they don't have the same features you have to, you know, have the, you know, good feeling and, and they're sort of the guarantee that you're not going to miss any of the dates correctly or anything like that. That is so important. Yeah, and we, and we, that get is, praised. Yeah. we get praised for the timeline guarantee. Yes. The same thing with our integrations with all the softwares. Like huh. during COVID, we went to every single software and we're like, please be our friend. Like we want yes. to work with you. And so we really did a lot on our APIs and then our yeah. customer service. Most of the time your salespeople aren't going to say, give every single one of your managers my cell phone number. They can call me day or right. night. I will answer because I want to help them. And our training is so in-depth and making sure that the yeah. district managers aren't responsible for training every single person. We'll do it for you. We'll yeah. make sure they feel comfortable with it and we'll hold hands. I can't tell you how many texts or emails I get every day of, hey, I'm about to make my auction live. Can you look it yeah. over? I do. And I'll look it over and tell you, hey, your pictures are upside down. Or <laughs> hey, exactly. You have two different units yeah. listed in these photos. Like I can clearly tell these are two different units. Like something right. went wrong. We're something there. Wrong. That's Our customer awesome. service is is phenomenal. So that's wonderful. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you again so much. And uh, all of you out there listening, happy renting.